hi guys you welcome to my channel today we want to talk about force and pressure when you talk about pressure we have countless number of pressure on surface of the earth when you don't have money and you want to buy clothes the pressure to get that money is on you when you are preparing for your final exam and you want to pass there is pressure on you when you have family to cater for and you don't have what the capability to take care of their responsibility the pressure of taking care of them is on you but absolutely all these aforementioned pressure they are not physical they are something that happens upstairs something that happens in your mind but in physics we actually discuss a physical pressure. When you talk about the physical pressure that we talk about in physics, it's also divided into two. We have the solid, solid pressure. We also have the fluid, fluid pressure. And you agree with me that when we talk about fluid, we are talking about gas and uh, liquid. Now, this is the most interesting part of pressure because of uh, a lot of application of it. Although this is also interesting, in short, every aspect of pressure are very, very interesting. Now, for you to understand what the fluid pressure better, there's need for you to have a concrete knowledge of solid pressure. Therefore, I'll be taking this class by looking into solid pressure and atmospheric pressure. Those are the two things we have to cover in this class. If you are yet to do that, kindly subscribe to this channel like the video share with your friends and drop your positive comment thank you we are going to start the class by understanding what we call pressure if i pick this book and i drop it on my palm this book definitely has a mass m isn't it and is exerting a certain pressure uh, a certain force that is equivalent to its weight on this palm. Now, since that force is directly perpendicular to my palm, the ratio of that force to the area of this palm is what we refer to as the pressure that this book exerts on my palm. Now, let's quickly see the reason why all of this happens. Whenever the ladies put on high heel, they experience pain, especially if the sole of that high heel is quite small. That is, a tiny sole high heel happens to give them more pains than when you have a big sole high heel. That is one. When your friend poke you with a compass, you experience what? Pain. Why do you experience that pain? Is it because it's a sharp object? No, not because it's what? A sharp object. But we explain why that is like that as we move. The same thing goes to when you have a sharp pencil. You know, when you have a sharp pencil and the other side that has a cleaner on it, the sharp part L is going to what? It's going to give you more pain if you are poked with it than the other side. Why is it like that? When you have a sharp knife, you tend to cut something very fast than when you have a blunt knife. Why are all those things like that? They are all as a result of pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is defined as the thrust per unit area. Pressure. is thrust per unit area. Cool. This is actually different from what you must have been reading or what you have in your textbook. Why is it different? 
it's still the same thing. Because when you talk about trust, you are talking about a force that is perpendicular to a surface. When a force is perpendicular to surface, we call that force trust. And what do I mean by perpendicularity? If this is a surface and this is a force, this thing makes an angle of 90 degrees to this surface, thus this one is perpendicular to this surface. Instead of you to call this a force, because of this perpendicularity to that surface, you call it a thrust. So your textbook is also correct by saying pressure is the perpendicular force per unit area. Do we understand that now? The SI unit of pressure is what I will discuss later in this video. Now, if force is thrust per unit area, then we have that pressure. Sorry, if pressure is thrust per unit area, we have that pressure is thrust divided by area. But your textbook says pressure is force over area. Yes, for simplicity's sake, that is why we are using force over area. But that force is a perpendicular force, not just ordinary force. Do we understand that now? Cool. Now, let's take for instance that I have this book and the dimension of this book is, let's say this is the book here, and the dimension of the book is five centimeter, okay, let me see, two centimeter by five centimeter. If the mass of this book is, for instance, two kilogram, are we together? Then I drop this book on a table. The book is going to exert a force that is perpendicular to that table. And that force is equivalent to the weight of this book. Thus, the thrust on this book is equivalent to the weight of the book. And that is given as F equal mg. If I want to know the pressure that this book exerts on that table, then I say my pressure equal mg divided by the area. Now, this is 2 cm, 5 cm. I'll need to convert this to meter. Therefore, this is equivalent to 0 0.02 meter, and this is 0 0.05 meter. Thus, the area of this book is 0 0.02 multiplied by 0 0.05. Thus, this is going to give us 0 0.02 multiplied by 0 0.05. Okay, that will give us uh, 0 0.001 meter square. Thus, the pressure that the book exerts on the table will become the mass, which is 2 kilogram, multiplied by 10 acceleration due to gravity, divided by 0 0.001. So, this will give us 20 divided by 0 0.01. So, our result will become... 20 divided by that, so we have 20,000 20, Newton per meter square. That shows that this book is exerting a pressure of 20,000 Newton per meter square on the table. Do we understand this now? Now, what do you observe about this? you will see that this pressure is quite very, very much. Now, how can we increase pressure or decrease it? Pressure is actually depending on two things, and that is the force and the area. If I actually want to increase my pressure, I will increase the applied force. If I increase the thrust on this word table, then my pressure is set to increase. And if I decrease the area, then my pressure is set to increase as well. Are we together? Cool. Now, if I want, uh, if I want to keep my pressure constant, and I want to increase the force. Sorry, I'm saying nonsense. Cool. <laughs> if you increase the force, rather, 
is quite going to increase the value of the pressure. And when you decrease the area, it's also going to increase the value of the pressure. Now, now that we understand this, can we move on? Cool. Now, let's see something here. Now, let's see the reason why when you use a compass to poke your friend, they complain and show, uh, uh, they, 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 they complain and also want to retaliate because of the pain and they'll be like, guys, stop it. Why? The reason why they feel that pain is because the amount of the compass is quite very, very small. Because of that small area, you have what? High pressure. Are we together now? Cool. And also, when you look at the girls that put on eye eel, eye eel used to be partially in contact with the surface of the ground, unlike when you are putting on a flat sole shoe. The flat shoe tends to do what? Cover more area. Why the eye eel cover what? Small area. And whenever the area covered is small, the pressure is said to do what? Increase. And that is why they cannot really move very fast when they are putting on eye eel. And when the sole is very, very tiny, the area in contact becomes very, very small. Then the pressure becomes what? Very, very high. The same thing goes to your sharp knife when you are using it to cut something and a blunt knife. No matter how small the area of the sharp knife can be, or, okay, that, that is when you have a knife now, you know, the area of the mount is quite what? Very small. But no matter how, that of the blunt one is greater than that of the sharp one. Because of the small area of that sharp one, you tend to have what? More pressure. And because of the large area of the blunt one, you tend to have a very small amount of pressure. For you to understand that clearly, let's take for instance that I want my pressure to be the same thing. That is, if I'm using a blunt knife, a blunt knife and I have what a sharp knife if I want both of them to have the same pressure what I'm going to do is that remember that their area is different let's say the area of this one is two meters square then the area of this one is four meters square if I want them to have the same amount of pressure it means that I will need to increase what the, uh, let's take for instance, I will need to increase the force that I'm going to apply on this. I will together, since the area cannot be increased and I want to keep my pressure constant, the only thing I can increase is to increase the pressure. And that shows that the blunt one will require more force compared to the sharp one. Why? Because its own area is high. And when area is high, pressure tends to what? Decrease. If you apply the same amount of force to this two, this one, pressure is said to be greater than this because the area of this one is greater than this. Are we together now? So, if this one requires more force, are we together now? Uh, that shows that it will not be easy to use the blunt one compared to the sharp one. Do we get that analogy clearly now? Cool, if we do. Now, let's go on now. I believe we understand why those things happen now. Now, when you see some materials that they make use of, like uh, your tractor, when you look at a tractor, they make use of big tire. When you look at trailers, they make use of big tire. Why? Because it requires large area. When they have large area, they have small amount of pressure, and that prevents them from sink. They will not be able to get stuck into the ground. Do we actually understand those applications now? If we do, let's proceed to the unit of pressure. When you talk about the unit of pressure, pressure is measured in Pascal. If you are writing this Pascal fully, you write it in small letter. But if you are writing it in the short form, you write capital letter A and small letter A. Sorry, capital letter P and small letter A. This is the unit for pressure. That is, pressure is measured in Pascal. And uh, if you look at the formula for pressure, we have this to be 
force divided by area, or you call it thrust divided by area. And force is measured in Newton, area is measured in meter square. Therefore, one Newton per meter square is equivalent to one Pascal. And one kilo Pascal is equivalent to 10 raised to power 3 Pascal. Are we together? Now, other units of pressure include ATM. So when I have one ATM, it's not your um, auto teller machine. I get to this now. We're talking about uh, atmospheric uh, pressure. So one atmospheric pressure or one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 ton. Or you said it is equivalent to 760 millimeter mercury. Are we together? And what is the equivalent of this in Pascal? This is equivalent to 101.3 kilo pascal. Are we together now? 101.3 kilo pascal. That is the equivalent of one atmosphere. Do we understand that now? So one atmospheric pressure is equivalent to this. Or you said it's equivalent to this or equivalent to this. There are other units in which you can express a pascal or the other units that you can use to express uh, pressure. Do you understand that now? Okay, guys. Now, let's look into what? Uh, the atmospheric pressure. When you talk about the atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure actually depends on elevation. Okay? Let's quickly look into that correctly now. Atmospheric pressure. Now, when you talk about the atmospheric pressure, it actually depends on altitude. When I say altitude, you can also call it elevation or you call it height. That's to tell you that the higher you go, the smaller the atmospheric pressure. When you move high, your atmospheric pressure will reduce. Are we together? Now, let's see something now. Let's take for instance that I have this diagram like this. And I mark here as my sea level. So if this is a sea level, the atmospheric pressure at sea level, as we have been taught in chemistry, is going to be what? 1 atm. At the sea level, atmospheric pressure is equal to 1 atm. Now, this is a valley that is below the sea level. This is above the sea level on a mountain. Now, the atmospheric pressure at the sea level is greater than the atmospheric pressure on the mountain. So, if this one is one atmosphere, you can have this one to be like 0 0.1, 0 0.5 uh, atmosphere. Are we together now? So, if this one is what? 1 atm, you can have this one to be 0 0.5 atm because atmospheric pressure decreases with height. And at this point, you can be having it as 1.7 or 1.5, depending on how deep you go down the ground. Are we together now? So, it's quite greater here. Do we understand this now? Now, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. Remember that. Why? Because, let's take for instance that I want to boil water at sea level. Now, we know that the boiling point of water at sea level is 100 degrees Celsius. But if we take it to that of the mountain, because the atmospheric pressure at the mountain is quite small, the boiling point would also what? reduce. You can be having it like about 86 degrees Celsius. Then, if you decide to come below the uh, sea level, you can now have it to be something like 102 degree Celsius. So as the atmospheric pressure increase, the boiling point of a liquid also do what increase. Do we understand that now? Cool. If we understand this now, the next question we need to ask ourselves, but before we ask ourselves that question, let me quickly recap what I said about atmospheric pressure. At the the higher you go, the smaller 
it becomes at the sea level atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere are we together but when you go on the mountain depend on how high it is is going to reduce let me say something about 0 0.5 depending on the height then when you go below the sea level atmospheric pressure is set to increase so your atmospheric pressure actually affects your boiling point the higher you go the cooler it becomes so as the atmospheric pressure reduces with act the boiling point also do what reduce that's to tell you that if i have a building for instance although they are still at sea level but for better understanding if you are staying downstairs and you are cooking and i'm staying upstairs cooking with the same temperature mine serve to do what cook faster than yours because the atmospheric pressure at the upstairs is quite smaller than that of the downstairs i believe you understand that now if you don't want to go on mountain so if you actually want your water to boil very fast you can go and boil it on the mountain and if you want to spend time boiling your water you can just go below the sea okay let's go now why is it that when you go up the atmospheric pressure reduce we want to know the reason for atmospheric pressure reducing with height now if you remember when i talk about pressure of my book the other time and what's the name of that my book it's trigonometry okay it's awesome if you have this book you can get it somewhere now pressure is given as a force that is perpendicular force no it's not just ordinary force and at the end of this class i'm going to point out some fact about this now now force all over what area that is what we call isn't it now this is to tell you that this book actually exerts some certain amount of what pressure that is on this table isn't it and that pressure is it has to do with the weight of uh, of the book if i intend to put another book on it what will happen the mass will increase let's say i doubled my book you know my book is two kilograms in mass if I double it, it becomes 4 kilograms. You see that the force tends to do what? Increase. Because if I have 2 kilogram book before, it's going to exert a pressure of uh, 20,000 newton, newton per meter square, like we calculate the other time. But if I double the book, that is the mass increase, what will happen? The weight of the book will also increase. That shows that as we increase the amount of mass, the weight or uh, the pressure would also do what increase isn't it cool now you will agree with me that everything that we call matter they all have what they all have uh, the so-called atom in them now as they have atom in them as they have atom in them those atoms they also have what mass the atom has what mass please excuse me let me check my camera Sorry, please. Okay, let's go on, please. Uh -huh. When you increase the force, what will happen is that pressure will increase. That is, if I increase the mass of this book, pressure is said to do what? Increase. Now note, everything that exists on the surface of the earth, they are made up of atoms. Any type of atom that they are made of, automatically the atom certainly have what? Mass. Now, let me assume that I have an air coulomb now. If this is an air coulomb, and here are molecules that are moving apart okay if these are molecules moving apart you can see now all these molecules by the time you sum their mass together that will be the weight are you getting this now the mass when you saw when you sum the mass together that will be the force exerted on this particular surface because everything is acting on this but let me divide it into segments if i divide this to what we call the atmosphere that is okay let me call this sea level rather if this is our sea level are we together now if i count the number of uh, molecules that i have here i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen are we together now so let's say this is thirteen are you getting this now Permit me to just call it 13 atmosphere for better understanding. Now, this is 13 atmosphere. But if I move higher a bit, let's say this is 
<clears throat> above uh, C level. Above C level, if you count the number of uh, molecules that I have there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is just what? 8 atmosphere. You can see that the stuff is quite what? Reducing. Here it is starting, but as I move upward, the molecules reduce to what? To 8. But if I now move upward more, I have what? 1, 2, 3. So this is just what? 4. You can see that the higher I go, the smaller they become. Are we together now? So that is just uh, a simple analogy on how atmospheric pressure reduces with what? With air. Because as you move on, the molecules do what? They reduce. Now, let's quickly go back to this diagram here. Now, let's take for instance that this is out of space, outer, outer space. You know, as you move up or out, outside, outer space, there is absence of air there. Automatically, as you move upward, just like I show you, the air molecules reduces. Now, let's take for instance that from here now, let's see the number of molecules of air that we can have. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, from here to this place, it can only contain 10 molecules of air. That is from sea level to this place. Now, let's see if this one can also contain 10. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This can only contain what? 6. Okay, let's see the amount that this can contain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. If you look at this now, if I if 10 is equivalent to one atmosphere, at this point is just 0 0.6 atmosphere. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Are you seeing it now? Then here we have this to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is what? 1.8. You can see that. The lower you go below the sea, the higher the atmospheric pressure, and the higher you go, the smaller it is. And at the sea level, it's just what? One atmosphere. I believe we understand the reason why as you move upward, the atmospheric pressure does what? Reduce. Now, lastly, before we go, now, we said that pressure is actually force, perpendicular force, Per unit area. So the perpendicular force, okay, per unit what area. Now, if I have a table like this and I apply a force in this direction, let's say this is an angle theta, and I have another one and I apply force here like this. If you look at this force here, it's quite perpendicular. Abi? And here, this force is it perpendicular? This is A and this is B. Okay, I, I'm putting the question to you guys. Is this, uh, do we have a pressure here? Remember the definition. It is thrust per unit area. That is a force that is perpendicular to this surface divided by the area. Here now, you can see the force is perpendicular, right? Huh. Now, this is what, pre this pressure here is going to be force over what? Area, correct, because we have a perpendicular force. Is that not? Now, does that mean that the pressure here, because we don't have a perpendicular force here, does that mean that the pressure is equal to zero? Cool. You know, if I have my marker like this, and I do make it like this, you know, it's actually exerting a certain pressure on my hand, isn't it? Therefore, we cannot say the pressure here is equal to zero. Do you understand this now? So what we're just going to do is to look for the vertical component. You know, the vertical component of this force is going to be perpendicular to this surface. So when you get the value for that vertical component, that is the force that we are going to use. Do you understand that now? Because this particular force, we have two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component. You can check my video on vector and scalar and you see how to resolute this particular vector so that you know the vertical component and its horizontal component. So the vertical component is the perpendicular force and that is what we are going to use. Thank you for watching. We are going to make questions on this particular topic
in our next video on pressure before we now move to pressure in fluid. Thanks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.